confidence now. I need y'all to focus now. I need you to focus. Get your Bible up nice and high. Repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. And I can be what it says I can be. Holy Spirit, as the teacher is teaching, hide him in the gift that I might experience revelation, impartation, destiny acceleration, and manifestation in my life. In Jesus' name, shout amen. Shout amen again. Turn to Matthew chapter 6, and as you're turning, let me just kind of reinforce something. We're going to finish this series up on how to live free from worry on Wednesday night. I'm excited about today. We're going to cover some really good stuff, and then we're going to finish it Wednesday. And then next Sunday, I want you to be here. I know we're in the summertime, and I know, you know, vacations are happening. And how many know vacations are wonderful? Yeah. Somebody shout yes. Yes. Yeah. Vacations are wonderful. And so this series we're starting next Sunday on how to overcome the odds is so vitally important to your destiny. And especially where we are. How many know we're in a crazy time right now? And the odds are stacked against us in different ways, and you need to hear this teaching. So what I'm saying is if you're on vacation, I, if you're on vacation next week or going forward, because we're going to be in this new series for the rest of the summer and maybe early into September, depends on how far I get because I don't want to rush it. If you're not going to be here on a Sunday, you're going to be on vacation, whatever, great. But I need you to be committed. You circle back to hear the message. You need to hear each one of the messages because if you're going to you know, win against the odds, you need faith for it, yes? And faith comes by and hearing by. So I need you to be committed to hear this whole series. How many of you will make that commitment? Wave at me. Wave high, wave high, wave high. All right, so we'll start that next week. Let's finish this. Matthew chapter 6, because we've been looking at how to live free from worry, a life that's worry-free. And last night I was on a, a, um, on a Facebook Live with my, my pastor, Apostle Hilliard, me and uh, another one of his spiritual sons, and we were talking about this. Anybody saw last night? Wave at me. It was really, it was really good. One of the things you get a chance to see me become is when I'm in the presence of my pastor, I become a son. I'm not Bishop John in his presence. I'm a spiritual son, and it's a wonderful thing. But he invited me on, and, and uh, we had a great time talking about how to overcome things that shake your faith, and it was right up this alley of what we've been covering. So you might want to go check that out when you, um, when you get a moment. But you got to understand God wants you to live worry-free. Regardless of what's going on, he wants you to live worry-free. Say that. Say, God wants me to live worry-free. Say it another way. Say, God doesn't want me to worry. And we've been, how many of y'all have been getting that in this series? Wave at me. That, that you got to get this, that even though it's crazy stuff going on all around us, it is the will of God that you not worry about it. Amen, amen and amen. Matthew chapter 6, let's reinforce this scripture we've been looking at. Matthew 6, starting at verse 25, Jesus says to the disciples, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you're going to put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto a stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? How many know if God takes care of the birds and the flowers, they're not made in his image and likeness. They're not sons and daughters of God. If he takes care of those things, how much more will he take care of you? Verse 31 says, therefore, take no thought, no anxiety, no worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth you have need of all these things. How many of your kids know what they need? They know that you know what they need. How many know your, your kids are not worried about toilet paper in the house? How many know they act like it grows on trees? 
Your kids are not worried about the electricity. They're not worried, why? They leave the refrigerator door open, lights on, and <laughs> watch. They're not worried about that stuff, even though there might be a real situation in that they're not worried because they know mom or dad has that. Even if mom or dad don't know if they have it, as far as the kids know, mom or dad. Watch, if your heavenly father knows what you need, then why are you worried about it? Well, what should I do? Verse 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his way of doing things, and everything else shall what? Be added unto you. This is one of, this is the foundational text for this series, but it's one of multiple texts that we looked at in scripture, reinforcing God doesn't want me to worry. You see this again and again in the Bible. Philippians 4, I'm not going to go there. They might bring it up, but it, talk, it says, be careful for nothing. Worry about nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And when you do that, it goes on to say, and the peace of God that passes all understanding shall what? Keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. God says, don't worry, declare to the thing. Don't worry, but pray. Declare the word of God and give me thanks. And when you do that, the peace of God undergird your heart and your mind. So if you were the devil, what you would try to get a person to do when they're facing a situation is not declare the word to it, not give God thanks, because that's what keeps the peace in your heart. Child of God, listen to me. If you can keep peace in your heart, you can handle anything you face. Amen and amen. And so we've been seeing this, we've been dealing with this in this series, that it's not God's will for me to worry. We gave you a definition of what worry is. We said worry is simply this. Let's just keep reviewing real quick. It's a reaction in your soulish realm to what you believe will be a negative outcome. It's a reaction in your soulish realm. And I did an illustration. I'm not going to do it again. I've done it multiple times. So if you're a visitor, go back and look at the other lessons. But to understand that, you got to know how you're made. And we looked at 1 Thessalonians 5, which reinforced how we're made, that we are a spirit, we possess a soul, we live in a body. When you're facing a worrisome situation, <clears throat> it's not impactful in your spirit, we found out. Your spirit is perfect. It's not impactful in your body because your body is just a cloak that the real you carries. The impact is in your soul, in your soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect. That when you're facing a worrisome situ a situation, a negative circumstance, when something's popping off in your life, a negative doctor's report, you got bills stacked up, you got all types of stuff going on, what the enemy wants to do is come at you in your soul. And you gotta get that. He wants to come at you in your mind. The battle is in your mind. And what he does, and this is still review, he comes at you with fiery darts, the Bible says, which are negative thoughts about the situation. Because what he's after is getting you to believe the negative thoughts about your situation, get the definition of worry, to the point that you think your reality is what you're thinking. Because if you think what you're thinking is your reality, if you think that the negative situation is going to turn out negative for you, then you will have this reaction from your mind. You will have this reaction out of worry, and now you're out of peace. And because this is a real thing, how many know you can, you can know how to walk in peace and blink and be in worry? Because all it takes is you taking the bait of a negative thought. Watch this. How many have heard thoughts, you're going to die early? I got my hand lifted. Just out the blue. Or what? Or you cough, and that's cancer. Now you sneeze, that's COVID. When it could have just been some dust. But my point is, all types of negative thoughts come. Now I got thoughts, I got to protect my marriage against time act. <laughs> All types of thoughts, hear me, can hit your life. How many know every time your gas meter goes from full, so it's going, how many know you got all types of thoughts about, you know, about gas and... If you grocery shop every week or other week, you got all types of thoughts because what used to cost you $100 now costs $270. 
And if you're watching the news, every time you turn around, there's a shortage here. There's an outbreak there. Just when, you know, there's another variant. How many know they coming up with variants? There's a Timac variant now. There's a variant up there. All, all types of stuff that watch, watch, is very real factually, but is not real truth-wise. And you got to understand what we've been looking at lately is you got to have a regimentation that is part of your daily life to keep you out of worry and keep you into peace. I really, I don't worry. I mean, Pastor, I don't stress. I don't get stressed out real easy. I just don't worry about a whole lot of things, but I'm not so, you know, I'm not so ignorant to think that I'm above it because just when you think you're above something, that's when you fall prey to it. And so let's look at who really needs teaching like this. Wave at me high, man. If you don't have your hand raised, you just, I'm going to leave you alone. Just amen. And so let's kind of review what we covered so far. On Wednesday night, we started covering this section, this regimentation to live worry-free. Number one from review, I'm going to go quick. We said that number one, when something's going on, you got to find out what God's word says about your circumstance. You got to know what God's word says. Nothing worse than a ignorant believer. If the Bible is your guide and you don't know it, then you are flying blind. What does the word say? Not what Facebook says. What does the word of God say about my circumstance? We're not going to go there. Psalms 119, 105, that word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. How many know the word is supposed to be the directive for my life? It's the guide for my life. You got to understand what does the word say? Number two, we found out Wednesday night, I must make an intentional decision to accept and be fully persuaded that what the word says is truth and is greater than my circumstances. How many know this word has to be your truth? <laughs> no, no. And you have to embrace it's greater than any circumstance I face. It's greater than cancer. Y'all yeah. making me work too hard. Because I've, I've been in churches about all my life. Believers, if they make the mistake and go, you know, the word is true, but. And they'll have something that the word, you know, is trumped by. You have to make a decision. This word is not a option. It's my only option. It's, it's, it's not the Bible and the Quran and it's, hear me, no, no, no. It is the word of God. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God shall stand forevermore. It's the word. Well, I believe the Bible is written by a white man. That's because you haven't been to Israel. You're ignorant and you don't even know it because when you go to Israel, you realize all that's foolish. Well, I just don't know. Jesus was a white man. You go to Israel, a white Jew will tell you Jesus is darker than most black people. So you want to get caught up in ignorant, minuscule things that mean nothing concerning your victory. Whether he was white, black, polka dots with green stripes, as long as his blood was pure and he died for my sins, that's what matters. But what you see on a cross, blonde hair, blue eyed, that is not Jesus. There's no way he could be that. If you went to Israel and lived outdoors, you'd be darker than me. This word has to be your only option. I don't know about y'all. I don't go looking for any answers anyplace else. This word is my answer. Amen. Here's the third one, that, and then we stopped here on Wednesday. You have to establish a faith confession. If you're, if you're going to live a worry-free life, you have to have a faith confession. We said, I'm not taking you there, but a faith confession is a statement in agreement with the Word of God in spite of what your circumstance is. A faith statement is a statement in agreement with the Word of God in spite of what your circumstance says. So the, your circumstance says that I have a lump on my breast. That's what your circumstance says. Watch, but I have a faith confession in spite of what my circumstance says. That watch, I am not the sick. The doctors say I have cancer, but I won't say I have cancer because that's not what the Bible says. I am not the sick. I am the healed, healthy, whole child of God resisting all sickness and disease because the Word says by His stripes I am healed. <laughs> 
A faith statement is not if it be the Lord's will. Because he didn't say that in his word. He wrote his word so I know his will. I, I, I never have to ever say, I'll see you tomorrow if it be his will. Because he said, with long life I shall satisfy you. Amen and amen. Are you listening to me? See, please hear me. Church was not intended by God to be a place you're entertained. It's a place you are trained to reign. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. And so you got to have this, everybody say faith confession. Faith. Say it again, faith confession. Faith. You got to have a faith confession that goes along, hear me, with what you're believing God for. Now, let's jump into number four because that's just review. Everybody say review is over. So what was number three? What was number three? What was number three? You have to establish a faith confession. Number four now it expands it, and that is you have to establish faith action to go with your faith confession. Tell somebody it matters where you go to church. You, no, no, you have to establish faith action to go with your faith confession. In other words, a faith confession is not enough. You have to have faith action. Everybody say faith action. Go to James chapter 2. Let's look at something real quick. James chapter 2, verse 20. You got to have faith action. This is where believers miss it because they'll declare the word, but they don't have any movement. James 2.20 says, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is what? Yeah. Is what? Yeah. So listen to me. I need you to hear me. If, according to Scripture, if there is no faith action to go with your faith confession, you void out your faith confession. If there's no faith action to go with what you're declaring, what you're declaring is a moot point. Yeah. Now, let, come on, let's walk through something. Many times, you don't feel victorious. <laughs> come on, where's my honest people at? You ever wake up sometimes, you don't even feel saved. <laughs> sometimes, you don't feel victorious. Listen to me but you have to act like it. Victorious people don't sit around and pout all day. Look at your neighbor, see if they're pouting right now. Look at your neighbor. No, 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 no. Victorious people, hear me, have corresponding, suitable, appropriate action based upon what they're believing in spite of how they feel. You got to get that. This walk of faith has nothing to do with feeling. You can feel like it's a bad situation. You can feel like it's not going to work out. You can feel like, why am I going through this again? You can feel like nobody understands. You can feel like I don't want to get out of bed. You can feel like I'm just never going to stop crying. But in spite of how you feel, you got to get up and do something. Now, I want to show you a key that so many believers miss and so many preachers miss. Go to Romans 4. I want to show you a key about this, a key to bringing to pass God's Word in your life, a key to bringing to pass things which you're not seeing. I want you to see this is a key that is critical. Romans 4, verse 17, it says this, talking about Abram, who was Abraham, as, as, as it is written, I've made thee a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead, and call those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Verse 19, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. So when God said they were going to have a child, they were way beyond childbearing years. Look at verse 20. He, talking about Abraham, staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Now, hear me. I want you to get what he's saying. Abraham's actions 
went totally against where his body was. His body was like, no way, Jose. Nothing's coming up. Nothing's moving. You'll get that later. No, nothing's moving. You're well beyond. That season is over. It's amazing how God can grace you for something that defy, it, defy, it, 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 um, it, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Defies, thank you, over in the back. It defies nature. God can grace you in a moment to do what you normally cannot do. And watch, watch. It was Abraham acting like what God said. Listen to me, this is critical. It was Abraham acting. Everybody say acting. He was, it was him acting like what God said was true when in the moment it hadn't happened that brought it to pass. I'm going to walk you through that. It, it was Abraham acting like it was true. God told him, you're going to have a baby in your old age. Sarah's getting ready to get pregnant. How many know she can't get pregnant by herself because this is not miraculous conception? Sarah's getting pregnant. Abraham's looking at his body and his body is saying, no way. His body's saying, I don't even remember what to do. No, watch, but watch. He didn't get caught up in the natural. He didn't get caught up in the facts. He got caught up in what God said and he began acting. He began talking different. God said, no longer call yourself Abram, you're Abraham. For a father of many have I made you. No longer Sarai, but Sarah. He began, they began to call each other what God said. Acting, how many know? That means, I don't know if y'all ready for this because y'all too spiritual. No, y'all too spiritual. If God said they're going to have a baby, that means they had to go into the bedroom and act like it. They had to act like it. They had to go, all right, let's roll. They had to act like it. And hear me, you need to get this. It is when things don't seem to be so that you act like it is so that brings to pass what wasn't so. Come on, you got to get that. You got to get that because you, you make the mistake maybe of acting like it's so when it is. But faith acts like it's so before it is. Now let me say something. I don't know if you can handle it. I don't know if you can handle this. It's cool. Your, everything God has for you never is. It always was. Ooh, that's good. That's good. Because God has blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. God, watch, watch how bad God is. God didn't create you first and then start coming up with everything you need. He created everything you would ever need, everything. Then he brought you on the scene. So your stuff was here before you got here. Let me say it the way I'm hearing it. You stepped into a totally victorious life the day you took your first breath. So God says, your stuff was here before you were here, so act like it's here. And it is your willingness to act like it's so before you see it so that causes it to manifest. Amen and amen. Who's that for? Wave at me. Wave at me. Come on. Well, I don't, I don't want to be a fake person. I don't want to be a fake. No, you're not being a fake person. You're being a faith person. You're speaking those things that be not as though they are. You're declaring what he said. If he didn't want me to have it, he shouldn't have said it in his word. Amen. All right, let me give you the next one. Number five, I have to keep my thought life in agreement with God's word by listening to God's word every day. You should be getting word in you every day. You get on Facebook every day. You get on Instagram and TikTok every day. You check that stuff every day. You, you get up and grab your phone, many people. Get up and grab your phone. Watch, you, you ought to get some word every day. Everybody say every day. <laughs> As they hear me, this is where the devil wars with us. Tell your neighbor, pay attention right now. This is very important. This is where the devil wars with us. He wars with you in your thought life. Everybody say thought life. 
Now, let me tell you what he's after. It so matters where you go to church. The devil is after you thinking the opposite of the word. Because if he can get you to think opposite of the word, he can get you to become your own worst enemy because you can begin to produce the opposite of the word. Are you listening to me? And so you have to get word in you every day. Just like you eat naturally, you ought to be eating spiritually. You ought to either be reviewing what you learned on Sunday, listening to something, and you cannot listen to everybody. There's a whole, not all, there's a lot of preachers with a mic on TV or streaming that, pe that are in error. They are off, they are in error, but because they can lift their voice and go, come on, give him praise. Uh-uh, God will bless you good. Uh-uh, and, and hear me, people just go, ah! And no, you got to go past that, and are they giving me Bible? In context not extracting stuff out in context you cannot listen to everybody you got to guard yourself but you got to hear good word and there's more than just me there's other great teachers y'all hear me but there's a whole lot of error folks and you got to take what you've learned here and run it through others that i hear me Every good since I went to Israel, it messes me up because there's so many preachers that are ignorant because what they're preaching, the text they're preaching, they're wrong because I've been there and saw it. I'm like, you're off because you don't even know what you're talking about. So you're giving error to people. You got to get word in you that will protect, let me say it, will balance your thought life. Watch. Whatever you get in you is what comes out of you. Amen and amen. amen. The enemy says, if I can get you to think wrong word, I can get you to produce. If I can get you to think the opposite of the word, I can get you to produce that. Now, here's why. You know this scripture because I quote it a lot. They'll bring it up on the screen. But Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That word heart, if you're a Victorian, you know it's the word soul. It's your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect. If you, if you can, hear me, if you turn around and think it, and embrace it as truth, you will manifest it. No if, no ends, no buts. We can lay hands on you till you're blue in the face. We can have you laid out on the carpet. You can be rolling around here. We can put so much oil on you till you're a greasy pig at a luau. We can do all of that stuff. Hear me, I've been doing this way too long. And you can get up and Minister Vincent can be on the Hammond and we can be playing and shout, shout your victory now. Shout out, you, ah, ah, run for the Lord. Jump for God. Turn around, because he didn't turn it all around. You doing all that and go back to nothing's changed. Watch. Watch. Now you clapping, but you're going to stop clapping right now. Nothing changed because the one that invited it to come didn't exit it. Because your environment will never change till you start talking different. And you won't talk different till you think different. And you won't think different till you get information that you believe. That's why the, the reality is people that can walk away from God People that have been walking with God, they've been in the kingdom for a long time, and now they walk away and go, well, I don't know if I believe that. That lets me know you never did. Because when this is truth, you can't walk away. And watch, when this word is truth, I can tell by just talking with you for a few minutes if this word is truth. Because what you say lets me know. Because anybody that believes this word is truth, go to 2 Corinthians 10, bring that up on the screen for me. Anybody that believes this word is truth is on alert about their thinking. They're on high alert. We gave you this scripture before, but I think it's worth going back to. 2 Corinthians 10, 5, it says, cast down vain imaginations and every high thing that wants to exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought into the obedience of Christ. Anybody who believes this word, they hear me, that really believes it, they don't let negative thoughts just walk in their head. I hear I'm going to die. 
I hear that every, I'm talking about me. The enemy puts that in my head. I mean, I hear that all the time. You're going to die early. You're going to die. And I, I go, the devil is a liar. I shall live and not die. The word says I shall live long and see the salvation of the Lord. I don't let negative thoughts come and park in my brain at all. All. I attack them. I cast down vain imaginations, every high thing that wants to exalt itself against or above the knowledge of God. Things like, is God able? God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I could ask or think. See, we can tell when you, if you believe the word, even how you talk the word. Ask your neighbor, do you believe the word? You know when we can tell if you believe the word? Let me say this. Can I pastor for a minute? That's, I pastor all the time. When you've been believing for something to happen and it doesn't. See, y'all quiet on that. You know, you have the testimonies. I was believing God. I was believing I needed God to show up on Friday. And God showed up when I needed him to. I, I declared that God was going to show up by Friday, 12 p.m. And I was standing on the word. And when I did, God showed up at 11.57 and 30 seconds. And I gave him praise. Just like he said it would. Oh, I give him glory. And that's great. We go, yes, ah, yes. Is it, and can he do it? Yeah, he can do it. Hashtag he did it. All this stuff. That's easy. But what happens when you needed him to show up by Friday and it's now next Thursday? Because what believers miss, see, I'm trying to win my wife back right now from Time Mac. Don't try to do it. What believers miss, hear me, I know what I'm talking about. Many times, what one, you got to know this, and I've said this before, God never shows up on time because he's not bound by time. People who are bound by time have to show up on time. God just shows up, and when he does, it's time. What, what believers don't get is, listen, this is going to help you too. What believers don't get is many times your time limit is too soon for a creative miracle. You want God to show up in your comfort zone, but that's not faith. And God, so many times I've seen people miss what God wanted to do because you didn't have faith in God, you had faith in that timeline. And I've seen God take us outside the timeline and do a creative miracle. And hear me, God, who, who needs to hear this part right now? Because I, hear me, if you ever see God do a creative miracle, it's a wrap. No, it's a wrap. Who's seen God do a creative miracle? Is what I'm saying true? No, no, when you've seen God do a creative miracle, no, I'm talking about a creative miracle. I'm talking about a blind eye opening, yeah. a deaf ear opening, yeah. a situation turning around when everybody gave up. Yeah. Hear me. I, I remember one of my relatives had AIDS back in the day. They had AIDS, you know, and, and I mean, they were just living a, a foul lifestyle. They had AIDS, and they were going to die. And I laid my hands on them and prayed and spoke to it. And the doctors, there was nothing they could do. They went back, AIDS, gone. No AIDS in there. AIDS is gone. Watch, watch. I've seen eyes open, deaf ear. I've seen it again and again. I've seen it. Hear me. When you've seen God do a creative miracle one time, it's a wrap. Then time goes out the window because you serve a God who is outside time. Oh, I'm hearing the Holy Ghost. If you're made in his image and likeness, he created you. He, he puts you in time, but you're not a time being. I got the anointing of Bill Winston right now. You're not, you're not, hear me, you're in time, but you have the ability to not be regulated by time so you can turn around and call for things outside of time to come into time that weren't supposed to be there at that moment, but because you have the ability to operate in the seen and the unseen, you can speak those things that be not. Not that they don't exist, they're in another dimension outside of time, and anything outside of time can be brought into time. And when you believe the word of God, you cast down things that try to get you off your square. Who's that for, man? You got to be bold enough to speak. Well, what if it doesn't happen? What if it does? <laughs> 
Okay, now let me, ooh, we got to close. Let me give you a couple more. Can I give you all a couple more? Can I give you a couple more? Yes? Now, this is, this, some of you need to really get this one, okay? You need to really get this one because this is a problem for some of you. There's a problem. Tap somebody on either side and go, this is a problem for you. Okay, when you're dealing with a situation, a circumstance that's trying to bring worry on you, here's the next one you got to get. You have to avoid discussions with people who disagree with the Word of God concerning your victory, and they want to give you sympathy or pity. <laughs> Hear me. You don't have time to disagree with people. People who disagree with the Word of God concerning your victory. That's right. they, they, they want to give you sympathy. Oh, I'm so sorry about your situation. I just don't, I don't know how you're doing it right now. I'm so sorry, and I'm so sorry, and you know, you just need to get your affairs in order, and maybe it's God's will for you to die, and, and, and hear me, I don't have time to be in a conversation with some, I'm in a faith fight and you want to give me sympathy or pity I don't need sympathy I need a supernatural move of God and hear me hear me now sympathy or pity feels good to your flesh come on y'all come on it feels good when, anybody knows like to have a pity party and you're looking for people to come to your party yeah it, it feels good. It feels good. But hear me, sympathy and pity will cancel out your faith. This is a good teaching today. It'll cancel out your faith. I don't need pity. I don't need sympathy. People, people want to sit with me and talk, but then they get mad because I sit there and they're like, oh, Bishop, you don't understand. <laughs> and they're crying and I'll slide a box of tissues over and I'm sitting there. And then I'll go, now what are you willing to do? Well, I don't know, I just, I just needed to talk. I, I ain't come here to talk. I came here to help you with a course of action. Cause we can talk all day, that don't get nothing done. We gotta get up and have some faith action. And then they go, you're just insensitive. No, 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 faith is not about your feelings, it's about your action. Yes, cry. Let's, let's cry. Let's wrap our arms around them. Let's cry in the moment, but let's not cry for three years. That's right. Amen. First Corinthians 15, I need you to get this real quick. First Corinthians 15, verse 33, about this point. It says, do not be so deceived and misled. Evil companionship communion, associations, corrupt and deprave good manners and morals and character. Who you talk to affects you. And when, hear me, especially now, hear me, everybody knows gas prices are high, but is God not able to supply your gas? Come on. We, every, we know there's inflation, in a famine, in a famine, and when there was drought, God fed the prophet. Yes, Come on, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. See, the question is, do you believe? Yeah. Do you believe? So, oh, gas is high, gas is high. I'm not gonna be able to go on vacation. You right, you're not going. I'm not gonna be able to go on vacation. I can't afford a gas. You right. You are, thank you, right. So I know where to find you. You right. Well, I guess God wants me to do a staycation. He didn't say that. You said that. Because you think gas price, watch, watch how crazy people are. You think gas prices dictate what God can do. Why can't God have somebody walk up to you and say, the Lord told me to give you this gas card that has $300 on it. Why, why can't that, why, why can't that happen? Who needs to hear this part? Wave at me, wave at me. Hold on, Mrs. Timack is talking. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes, so last night my dad said something on, online that um, this was good, yeah, th see? That's Mrs. Edmondson talking, that's Mrs. Edmondson. 
But I was, you know, with Apostle Eric, we were, on, we were doing a live stream, and he was talking about how with believers, man, we say we're in faith and we're not. And so it was, you know, they were back in the recession, back in the 80s, and um, people stopped giving or whatever, and so his, his, his giving went down, and he um, couldn't pay his staff. He had payroll coming up on that Friday, and he was believing what came in on that Sunday would help pay the staff that they had at that point, and the, uh, nowhere near the money came in. So Sunday afternoon, he's like, I can't pay staff this week. So he called his pastor on Monday. He called his pastor, which was Apostle Fred Price, who was alive back then. He called him, and he, he told him, and Pastor Fred, Apostle Price, who was Pastor Dr. Price back then, said, you know, some people who say they're in faith aren't in faith. He said, you're calling me, talking about your payroll's not due till Friday. It's only Monday. And you've already conceded by what didn't come in that you can't do something on Friday four days from now. You're not in faith. And my dad had to check himself and realize he wasn't in faith and worked his faith. And guess what happened? The money came in on Thursday to take care of the staff on Friday. See, in other words, child of God, listen to me. Stop allowing natural things to determine what your God can and cannot do. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all. You could ask or think, who that for? Who that for? All right, let me give you this. We are, ooh, we're out of time, man. We're out. Who? Can I give you this last one? Who wants the last one? Wave at me. Who'd rather wait till Wednesday? Wave at me. Are there any hands? None? Greedy people. All right. All right, let me give you this last one for today. Hear me. Write this down. Faith, uh, uh, this faith regimentation. I praise God until the solution and manifestation comes. I praise God until the solution and manifestation comes. Once I've declared the word, I thank God for it manifesting in my life. Yeah. Now, you got to get this. Once you've declared it, once you've declared what the word says, you don't need to keep declaring. You need to now go into thank mode. Yeah. Just like if your child asked you for something and you told them I'm going to do it and they kept asking you after about the second or third time you get irritated because you would go, why you keep asking me? I told you I would do it. First time you'd be like, yeah. Second time, hey, listen, I'm going to take care of it. Third time you'd be like, why are you asking me? Their continuation to ask to make their request known would irritate you because you already responded. God said, I've already responded in my word. I've already told you what I'm going to do. So once you've declared what I've said, thank me for it. Yeah. Every time you're facing that situation, thank me till the manifestation comes. Give me praise. Give me worship. Yeah. Thank me for it. Now, everybody say why. why? Somebody shout loud, why? I want you to see something, man. God, it matters, the word. Go to Isaiah 57 real quick. Isaiah 57, this is important. We got to close with this. This is important. God says, everything God says ties to his word. Look at Isaiah 57, 19. God says, I create the fruit of your lips. Peace, peace to him that is far off and him that is near, saith the Lord, and I will heal him. So the Lord says, whatever is the fruit of your lips, that's what I bring to pass. It's the fruit of your lips I bring the pass. Yes or no? Yes. So watch, watch. The Lord says, fruit of the lips is what I bring the pass. Well, let's find that out. Hebrews, what's the fruit of the lips? Hebrews 13, because you, you think, okay, fruit is me talking. No. Hebrews 13, go there quickly. Last scripture, we'll stop right here. Hebrews 13, 15, it says this. It says, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So watch, the fruit of your lips is what you will give God thanks for and praise for before it's happened. That before it's come to pass, I lift my hands and I give him thanks. Before it's come to pass, I lift my hands and I give him praise. God, I give you praise for that because I know you are a faithful God. I've already declared it, so now I'm not worried about it, and I give you praise. Every day, I look at the thing. God, I give you praise. Change is not in front of me, but I give you praise because God says when you will sacrifice how you feel, and open your mouth and give me praise and give me glory and give me honor. He says, I create what you sacrifice coming out your mouth. 
You don't got time for a pity party. You don't got time to be going, woe is me. God says, if you trust me, praise me. If you trust me, give me thanks. If you trust me that I'm God, then after you declared, just start having a praise party. Every time you look in the mirror, God, I bless your name for this. God, I give you praise for this. God, I thank you for this. God, I give you glory for this. God, I manifest you for this. Because God says, if you will praise me before it's so, I'll manifest it. It is so. All because you trust me in spite of how you feel. I don't know what you're dealing with right now. I don't know what you're working with right now. But I dare you to declare right now that God supplies my need, call to his riches and glory, and then lift your hands and give God praise. Lift your voice and give him praise. At home, lift your voice and give him praise. Let the fruit of praise come out of your mouth. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly. <laughs> Even if others don't want to do it, you do it. God, I bless you. I give you praise regardless of the situation. Because God says, I create the fruit of that. Oh, God, I need you to move. He says, no, declare what I said and just walk around giving me praise. You, you ought to have a reminder facing you to wake up. Bless God this morning. In the bathroom, bless God right now. In the car. You know what frustrates the devil? When the situation goes from bad to worse and your praise intensifies. Because you're like, David, I'll bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth one last time where's my praisers at make some noise go <laughs> glory to God amen amen be seated we got to get up out of here amen amen who needed to hear this word today amen tell your neighbor it works it works yeah, it works. It works. Amen. We're going to close this out on Wednesday. I got some more I got to give you. And then Sunday, we're going to start this brand new teaching. I cannot wait to jump into that. Heads are bowed very quickly before we release you today. If you're in the building or you're online and you're not born again, would you consider giving your heart to the Lord today? Jesus loves you so much. He came down from heaven, took off his deity, stepped into humanity to take places, switch places with you. He went to hell for you. Went to the cross first, shed his blood, got beaten and whipped, laid his life down, went to hell for you and me, and rose again all for us so that you'd have a right to make a decision like this one. I want to pray quickly a prayer for you. If you're here or you're online and you've never received Jesus as your Savior, but you want to right now, or maybe you've never you backslid and you've never made a decision to come home, you can right now. We're simply going to pray this prayer. Me and the posse of victory, in-house and online. We're going to say the same prayer even though we're born again. We're going to say the same prayer because if you're here or online and you're praying this prayer because you need to, we want you to know you're not by yourself. Repeat this prayer. Say, Dear Jesus, today I give you my life and I receive your free gifts of salvation and righteousness. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me shedding your blood for me, going to hell for me, rising again, all for me. Today, of my own free will, I receive you. And I thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. Can we make some noise for people that got saved, rededicated? If you made that decision, gave your heart to Jesus, or rededicated your life in this room or online, would you do me a favor? Would you text Got God to 71441? When you do that, it lets us know the best way to connect with you. And if you will text God, God to 71441, a form will hit your device, fill it out, submit it back electronically, and then we know the best way to connect with you. And you're going to get a response video message from me and Pastor Aisha talking about what do you do now that you're born again? What do you do now that you're rededicated to your life? So text God, God to all one word to 71441. Can y'all make some noise one more time, please, for people that got saved, rededicated? Somebody shout, it's tithes and offering time.
Oh, side note, real quick. I meant to do this. Side note. We're gearing up for another Getting to Know Victory next month. Getting to Know Victory is for anybody looking to join this church or get questions answered to help you make a decision about joining this church. So if you want to join or you want to get questions answered, Getting to Know Victory is the starting place. It's a session with Pastor Aisha and I. You get a chance to meet all of our leaders, our elders, our ministers, our deacons all of our directors you get a chance to hear the vision of the church and then personally ask pastor aisha and i any questions about anything so if you'd like to be a part of that you want to join or you want to come to get information to help you make a decision would you go to our website and register for getting to know victory please that way we can get a head count and prepare for that all right somebody shout this tithes and offering time now this church man believes in tithing and giving. If you love giving to God, make some noise. Here at this church, this is a tithing church. We believe in giving God the first tenth of any increase that hits our hand. Paycheck, fine money. Somebody gives us money. God gets the first tenth. It's his, it's not mine. Then we take the 90%, handle all of our responsibilities, and put money where? Put some in savings. What's left over is called your your excess and that is what you give offerings out of as the Holy Spirit leads you to do so now if you're here today or you're watching online you have a church home you just hung out with us today and you're supposed to pay your tithe please do not do that here your tithe should go to your home church not here if you want to sow an offering great but don't give us any other churches tithe if you're here or watching you don't have a church home you're looking for one you don't have one and you want to pay your tithe by all means you can as long as you don't have a church home now how do you give in case you don't know several ways to do that number one you can always go to our website victorychrist.cc and give that way number two another way you can give is if you're watching at home there's an address on the screen you can mail something in or there's a drop box outside the executive wing you can give that way if you're in the building we know most of our church now you know from COVID gives electronically but if you're here and you need to give get an envelope because you want to get cash or a check you're not giving electronically you need an envelope for that we want you to put in an envelope hold your hand up please and the ushers will come and give you an envelope hold your hand up high ushers will come can y'all make some verbal noise for our ushers please no that's bad make some noise for the ushers that was a little above bad okay and so hold your hand up the ushers will come and serve you and so you can fill that out and for those that needed an envelope after service on your way out there's two white bins on the walls in the back you can drop your envelope in there another way to give is you can download the mobile app if you'll text VICCC space app to 77977 you can give that way or you can just text to give text VICCC to 77977 lastly if you have an equipment app you can give that way all right when you're ready to give hold up whatever you're giving with if you're giving electronically hold up your mobile device if you just got an envelope please continue to fill it out don't rush on that fill that out at home hold up something whatever you're giving with today hold up something if you have nothing to give with hold your hand up you're not giving today you can get a paycheck you're not giving off but hold your hand up too nobody left behind wave it before the Lord speak to your seed say seed I know you can hear me everything has ears I'm talking to you go now get in the ground increase multiply and harvest I'm calling you in to the kingdom of God and my citizen hand in Jesus name shout amen shout amen again all right stand to your feet now we're getting ready to dismiss if you're going to come up in the line i want you to form one line we're going to put past ice right here whether you're giving or something or not if you want to come up and greet her great if you don't want to wait you have something you don't want to wait there's a box out in the lobby you can drop whatever you want to do in there and so please do that online we're throwing it to the studio for prayer so put your prayer request in the chat look at your neighbor say neighbor i gotta go but i want you to know this it's God's will for you to live worry-free. Give them an air high five, a Wakanda hug. Don't forget the, don't forget the business X. Before you go to your car, go out to the 10 out back, walk through and see through and see the business. All right.